thank you for being here. And excuse me, I'm a bit nervous, so I'll probably, I don't know, I'm nervous. So <laughs> I'm Anna, I'm 16 years old, and I'm a high school student. And what makes me ahead of my time is my keen for science. It all started as a kid. And since my mom was a math, is a math teacher, I used to sit under the table and while she was teaching other, other children. And I used to hear the phrase, when, when x tends to infinity. And I was really curious about this term, infinity. And I started asking questions. And the answers were pretty much the same. You know, it's endless. In mathematics, it's just a symbol. And uh, it does exist in reality. So I guess that as a four-year-old, I was pretty satisfied with those answers. But as I grew up, I realized that there was something terribly <laughs> disturbing about those explanations, because they weren't simply enough. And I think, I realized that there, was no, there is no man in this world that actually understands infinity. And why is it there? Why do we need this concept? Why did we came up with this in the first place? And I, I also like to mention, no, I also like to mention, yeah, that um, my, this thirst for information uh, was born from watching sci-fi movies. And from there, I learned that the universe is infinite. And then I clicked. I said to myself that maybe if I would gain more information about the universe, maybe then I would understand infinity. And of course, this is just a statement. You cannot prove me right, but you also cannot prove me wrong. As you know, sometimes you must go blindly through understand to enlighten things. You must make assumptions. So, I also learned from there that we have access only to the observable universe. And this was a huge constraint for my life mission to conquer, the, conquer infinity. And the only way to break this boundary is by breaking the speed of light. And the only way to do that is using the, what's so-called the, the FTL methods, which you guessed it's faster than light travel methods. And one of these methods, the one that I'm going to talk about today, is called warp drive. So, what is warp drive? We've all heard, we've all seen, or at least heard, of the, te the technology of Star Trek. And there was a time when the script wasn't written, and the directors, all they knew is that they wanted to make a space opera, which implies, by its definition, space travel. But there also was a problem. They wanted the script to, stand st to stay on terms with the laws of physics. So, where is the problem here? Okay, even if the USS Enterprise would travel at the speed of light, it would need, it would need 20, 25,000 years to reach only the center of our galaxy. So, watching the grass grow would be far more interesting. And that's a serious problem. <laughs> So that's how they came up with this warp drive, this concept. Of course, today I'm not going to talk about the fictional one, this warp drive. I'm going to talk about the real one, the one that extends to reality, which has a different name, and it's called Alcubierre warp drive, or simply Alcubierre drive. So what is this weird thing? In 1994, Physicist Miguel Alcubierre 
proposed a way to solve the universal speed limit. And that is, nothing, gets, nothing that has mass can travel faster than the speed of light through space. But, wait a second, I said that us, we cannot travel through space. What if instead I move the space around me? So, that's what Alcubierre thought about. And given the uh, laws of general relativity, you could do this because general relativity tells us that space is dynamical. It can expand, it can contract, and yeah, you could do this. And this is what I call a, a backdoor in physics, proper backdoor in physics, because the universe is just playing a little game with us. All you, it provides you with all the stuff, and it's hidden in plain sight. And it's, it takes someone really smart to come and see the, the simple and the complicated. And that's what al Kubir did. OK. So how does it work? Imagine that we have uh, two points in space. Uh, let's say Earth and the center of Milky Way. And the space between these two points is a slinky. Right? OK. On this slinky, we have a point where we say it's our spaceship. So if we expand the space behind the ship and contract the space in front of the ship, making some kind of a sling out of space, you would reach your destination without hardly moving at all. And that's what al -Kubir is all about. You could say maybe that uh, through this method you drag your destination towards yourself and you push back your starting point. OK, so we've seen how this works. But how do we make it happen? One of the most interesting things about this and unique things about al -Kubir, this travel, FTL travel method, is that you wouldn't be affected by any relativistic effects, like, say, time dilation. So you, that's because you would sit in a bubble of unwarped space. And you would experience time as well as you did on Earth. So the only, the only warp space is on the bubble, not inside the bubble. So you would come back home and not realize that your 10-year-old daughter, daughter became a granny, like poor old Cooper did. If you, you know what I'm referring to if you've seen Interstellar. So, and al Kubir also showed that you wouldn't be affected by any, any inertial effects also. You, this is a little bit more complicated to explain, so I won't get deeper into that. But I want you to remember that you wouldn't be squeezed to death when the ship, when the ship is accelerating. All right. Now, how do we make it happen? How do we make it work? For that, we are going to need to solve Einstein's field equations. So bear with me for a second. This is not too complicated. I'm going to explain. All right. <laughs> Why we do this? It's because these equations tell us how space behaves under the presence of a distribution of matter. But because they are equations, we can solve them backwards. And suppose I want space to do something, I can find out how 
to put matter in, uh, to put a mat to put a chunk of matter in place to in order to make space do what I want. And as expected, to contract the space in front in front of the ship, we would need a lot of mass. That's what it does. But in order to expand space, we would need something really, really, really weird, which is negative mass. And this is the major problem. That's why we are not jumping into ships right now and go search another world. <sighs> because it's still, a, it's still a weird idea right now. Some people think that, despite the advantages that it brings, negative mass, I mean, it remains on the large scale pretty horrifying, thermodynamically speaking. That's because negative mass experiences gravity as a repulsive force. So say I had a, an apple, an apple of negative mass. This apple wouldn't fall toward Newton head, Newton's head. It would fly away from it. So say I have two bunches of, of uh, masses with opposite sign then the, 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 ma the positive mass would attract the negative mass, and then the negative mass would repel the positive mass, and then again the positive mass would attract the negative mass, and so on to infinity. And this gives us a perpetuum mobile, which is a very thermodynamically no thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Of course, some of us are willing to break thermodynamics to fulfill their dreams. So the, the good news is that, is that negative mass isn't actually impossible. It's been made in a lab, actually, thanks to quantum mechanics, which is just another word for magic. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, it's, it's ought to be this, this experiment that gave, gave negative mass, which is, by the way, called, it's inspired by the Casimir effect. Well, I'm not going to explain that, that's far too, <laughs> all right. Um, this gave negative mass for a very short period of, of time. And it's thought to be impractical because we don't know if we could if we could do this on a large scale, if we could get enough negative mass. So it's still an open question. Of course, what we are doing right now are just baby steps. But in the end, we must remember that a game-changing idea was, in the first place, it was impossible until someone came and said, no, it's not impossible, it's necessary. <laughs> and I wake up every morning, I know, that, I know that the odds seem against me, they're all up against me. And I, and I wake up every, every morning and I tell myself that reality is the product of dreams so that I, I don't lose hope and I keep going on in order to fulfill my life mission of conquering infinity. And I would like to, to leave with this passing thoughts, which is a quote from Ulysses. And it says like this, Come, my friends, this is not too late to seek a newer world. To sail, beyond, to sail beyond the sunset and the bath of the western stars until I die. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>